Hello, all of you out there. And by all of you, I mean zero people because right now it's 5.30 and why am I on at 5.30? I don't know. I know why. It's because I have an improv class tonight. So I have to, I have to start at 5.30 and end a little early. So apologies now to the two of you that are watching. Thank you, too. Two, we slowly increase. It just ramps up. I, I feel like I'm missing a theme song. Um, so I'm taking suggestions for anybody who wants me to do a theme song. I will gladly do it. In my head right now is the theme to Perfect Strangers or Greatest American Hero. So I'll take votes. Go. Nobody's voting. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just have to do another theme song. So this is my theme song tonight. Show me that smile again. Don't waste another minute on your crying. We're nowhere near the end. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm doing. Um, the first person to guess what that theme song is gets nothing. But <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it is Tuesday. It is October the 13th. Wow. I didn't even know that. That's amazing. October the 13th, the darkest month of the year. Not really the darkest per se. I'd say that's probably December if you're counting, you know, hours. But the darkest time of the year, right? And it's almost like the darkest year of the time. Think about that for a minute. Uh, anyway, I had some very pleasant news today. I found out that the uh, uh, the Warner Brothers and their sister Dot are coming up on Hulu. I'm very excited about this. Animaniacs. If, if you know the Animaniacs, I'm a huge fan, and I, I can't wait for it to come out. I, I'm going to host a watch party or something. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm very excited. But even more so excited about my guest this evening. Tell me that wasn't a bit of a ramble, wasn't it? My guest this evening is Miss Laura Darrell. She's an actress. She is a filmmaker. She is a singer. And she's just an astounding person. And I got the pleasure of meeting her on my good friend, Ryan McCurdy. Look him up. Ryan McCurdy's show for the Savannah Repertory Theater on stage off. Uh, we share the show together and it was such a pleasant experience. I felt like I needed to have a much more deep conversation with her. And so I brought her here and we're gonna talk and it's just gonna be uh, amazing. So here we go. I don't know what's going on with my hair, so I apologize for that. Nobody cares. Laura, are you ready? She gave me the thumbs up. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. <laughs> Hello. I apologize for that ramble. Sometimes I don't know where I'm going. I love the ramble. You know, that's what creativity is. Follow the ramble until you find your way home. <laughs> I love that. Is that a t-shirt? No, but it should be. I just made it, it up. Be. You should. You should. Go ahead and print it out and uh, distribute it. Laura Darrell right there underneath. The, Follow the, the ramble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's a rainy day here in Maine. So, you know, it's sort of like that gloomy, you were talking about the darkest time of the year. Yeah. Feels like a very dark time. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, uh, you know, it's like five, five, five thirty six now. I just had to look at the time and it just seems like, yeah, the day's just already coming to an, an end. Right. Excuse me. I'm drinking a La Croix. I love seltzer. Oh, you just found the way to my heart. Seltzer. Really? Seltzer is my nectar of the gods sort of situation. Not that I'm a god, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's my nectar. Yeah. What she's trying to say. So um, what, what's your favorite seltzer? I really, I'm so boring. I really like Canada Dry Poland Springs original. I don't mm -hmm. like when it gets too, I'll do the raspberry lime or the pomegranate. But I don't want it to be so sugary. Like, I, I really love the original. I just want carbonated water. I get that. I totally get that. So I used to not be a fan at all. And my wife, she buys like these 12 packs of La Croix. And I've just, I've just really taken to it. You know, La Croix is good. You have to be careful. Well, no, I shouldn't. I don't know. Am I saying it right? <laughs> no, I think so. It has to be this. Good, good, good. Look They're cool. addictive. Absolutely. So we have our first question of the evening. Coming to us from, I believe, New York City, I think. 
Ryan McCurdy asks, Oh dear. What are the squirrels doing in your closet? <laughs> oh, I'm so happy and proud of Ryan. Um, because I've been wanting somebody to ask me about this. Um, because I think it's a big news story. Um, mm -hmm. They're just squirrels that are are invading my closet at a, at a really rapid rate. And, and I think I'm going to have to ask somebody to check into it because I wake up in the night and there's a squirrel um, in my closet, hops onto my dresser, runs out. My dog tries to get it, but it's way too slow. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's an infestation of squirrels hanging an out. infestation? Oh, oh, my gosh. I mean... Um, there's, they belong outside, not in my closet. They do. They certainly belong outside. Um, I have actually, I'm going to pull it up in a minute. I, I do have a video of a squirrel just because you know what life is all about. It's all about seeing the squirrels, isn't it? It really is. No, they're yeah. consistent buggers. And it's they, getting colder, so I, I, they're smart. I get it. But we're going to have a Western face-off, you know, like, <laughs> get out of my territory. All right, let's see if I can do this properly. Here we go. Um, okay, there he is. And this little munchkin was just outside my kitchen window. Yep. And, and so we have these things in our neighborhood. Uh, here, I can make them actually a little smaller. There we go. Uh, that's better. Oh, no, where'd you go? What? I don't know how this thing works. I apologize. But yeah, he's <laughs> out there and he's eating what we call a magnolia. Um, I don't know if it's a magnolia corn or I, I don't know what it is. All but right. It drops and it's he likes little, it. yeah, he loves it. He's eating it like a corn cob. Maybe I need to lure my squirrels out with food. That's an idea. Of screaming at them because that doesn't seem to stop them from coming. I, I don't need know if he's food. making that noise or whether we're making that inside. I don't, yeah, I think it was probably inside. Anyway, yeah, squirrels. Squirrel. Squirrels. So, you know, lovable, but not in your closet. Right, right. So you've been on the stage. Yes. Yes. <laughs> many, many stages. Many stages. Um, a common thing that we do in the theater, and I don't know if it's true with your theater experience as well, as we have a tendency to be distracted easily. Yes. And do you yell squirrel whenever that happens? I was just thinking squirrels. <laughs> I was like, what are we talking about stages? I just I'm still thinking about squirrels. Um, you know, I try to, I try to stay focused. That's, that's, that's good. Kind of, what, kind of why I love the theater is, is how meditative it is. Um, it feels like a really great opportunity to leave your life behind and just focus on, on whatever your whatever world you've stepped into. Right. Yeah, I get that. I, I do deal with a lot of kids, so I, I think that's probably why I see a lot of squirrels happening. In their eyes, on their faces. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I so we, yeah, we, you have done a lot of stage. You were recently on stage and no longer on stage. And I think they'd even stopped doing that show. Yeah, I just found out. Um, sorry, I just want to make sure no one would interrupt us. Right. Um, and you don't have to say what it is or anything because I, I, I already know how they do things. So I'll, I'll let you say what, whatever you need to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, just that, you know, um, that they, they closed frozen. Um, but, you know, Disney's been known to reopen. And that's the wonderful thing about Disney is that you never, you never really know what's just around the river bend, as oh, they say. Nice. So, so I have, I, I have to put my faith and trust and that they're, they have big ideas on the horizon. And they're just, they're trying to be as smart and resourceful with what they, what, what they can do right now in these yeah. challenging times. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I am a huge, huge fan of all Disney. Um, so I, I do hope that uh, that mega giant that they are does does come back. And and I don't know if have you watched any of the documentaries on uh, Disney Plus? Yeah, I've watched a few, but more mm -hmm. of like the shipwrecks 
I've been into the shipwrecks. Not, not. Really? As, I need to watch more about like the Disney history. I've cracked yeah. into them, but haven't really finished them. Yeah, it just it's astounding. Like if you watch the Imagineers, uh, Imagineering, the story of Imagineering on there, and and how things um, came from the the spot in Anaheim to where it is now, and and the huge park system that they have now is just right. uh, amazing. Um, right. It is amazing what they what they developed is incredible. And Frozen Live was incredible. I mean, I've never in the theater. I've certainly never worked with. Um, those resources and just anything the director wanted, more or less, to my knowledge. <laughs> I'm sure she might say something different, but to, to what I could see and, and hear, um, whatever was needed was was granted. Whatever mm -hmm. which was wished was granted. <laughs> so, um, but I have a very limited experience. You know, as an actor, you're the last person who finds out about what went on behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> I am because I, I try to focus on my job, which mm -hmm. is doing the best I can with the role that um, has been given to me. Yeah. So um, as far as Frozen Live goes, how did, did that did that come about before the Broadway musical or was that after the Broadway musical? It was before it was before okay. we were the first I was involved in like three workshops before we started rehearsals for the um, premiere, which was in 2016 mm -hmm. um, at Disney California Adventure. Um, and I think Broadway didn't come around until 2017. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I was uh, the first workshop that I was involved with. We couldn't even call it Frozen. We had it was some code name um, that. Um, yeah, that we couldn't share. So we were rehearsing in secret places for this unknown thing but was frozen because <laughs> it, it had just you know the first movie had just come out and it was quite popular oh yes i think yeah i think i remember that <laughs> being popular <laughs> big it was a big deal so so yeah, yeah it was fun it was fun to get to bring the role of anna to life and not be influenced really in any way by any other human being just to kind of take her up from this animated form and and figure out what what I could do with her on stage with with the help of so many people, so many people on the creative team. Um, Jason Michael Webb, Lisa Tommy, Christopher Windham, just amazing people who have worked extensively on Broadway and hot in the higher echelons of film as well. So I, I was very lucky to be there. Yeah, yeah. We are blessed sometimes in our lives with these rare experiences and they just, you can't, you can't take that away. I'm I'm so glad you got to experience that. That's amazing. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So yeah. I have this this jacket, opening cast and crew. So, right. You know, I yeah. Me too. You know, I was I was in the <laughs> I, was worksho I workshopped it just you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> On my own, long after it came out, I workshopped it in the backyard. To, in and, the backyard to your yeah. to your family. That's yeah. hey, you know. Exactly. I bet that was an incredible performance. Oh and yes, absolutely. To receive. The, the the lauding, the the applause, everything. Um, My parents have been front row seats to a lot of um, limited limited audience <laughs> performances. So I know I know what you speak of. Yes. So I, I know that that was an amazing experience for you in your career on stage. What has been the most satisfying experience you've had? Oof. Yeah, I know it's a hard question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can, the most satisfying. I mm -hmm. mean, they're all satisfying in different ways. I feel like, and I know that's such a lame answer, but I no, feel no. like every show teaches me something new about myself and about the world. And it's why, so even when it's really hard, like I've, I've been in shows that were really difficult, where I was like, man, this is kicking my butt. And I'm I'm not sure this is super fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. But but at the same time, it's teaching me so much. And then I've had shows that were just a ball. Um, that, you know, I mean, Frozen, how many times do you get to play a Disney princess just surrounded by that that much um 
wealth of resources and talent and everybody who wants this show to be to be magical for for thousands of people that come to see it every day. So that was special. Kid Victory was really special because I got to work with a legend and um, the subject matter isn't isn't like bring your family necessarily. It's about yeah. um, child abduction, um, but more than that, about a, a community coming together after a traumatic event to heal um, and how everybody heals and processes trauma in their own way. And so that was, I mean, just an incredible sh journey to go on. And again, super talented people that taught me a lot about um, acting and and telling stories and and then working with John and, and that was also another Liesl production anything you know Liesl does I know that uh we're gonna dig deep and mm -hmm. it's gonna be meaty <laughs> so you say that was another Liesl production it, did you get into that production because of your past experience with him I Liesl uh is uh, a woman. Um Oh sorry. <laughs> no, no. And she she is uh I met her first because of Kid Victory. Okay. So I did a I did the out of town tryout of Kid Victory with her. Then she got me involved with Frozen, um which was really exciting and I was so grateful. And then we went and then after Frozen went up, I went back to Kid Victory off Broadway. Ah. So, and then, you know, we're working on, we're working on some more stuff that I can't quite talk about yet. Okay. It's supposed to happen this year, but, uh, 2021 now we're looking at, we're looking at 2021. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. And that'll be a, a really cool, really cool show. Cool. So since you're not doing that right now, I'm, it, we, we talked before about you, um, doing some stuff in your closet. Oh yeah, oh yes. Sorry, I went back to squirrels. Not just the squirrels, but no, yeah. You, the you, other you, closet, um, the other closet that's not infested. Um, yes, I've been getting, I well I've I've done quite a few audio books, but then this year I've also gotten into voiceovers. So um, that's been really fun working with my agents at KMR and uh finding ways of um i actually love it like diving into commercial copy and thinking like how can i make this relatable and so someone isn't just thinking i'm selling them something but they they believe and hear the humanity of what's being um delivered so yeah it's a fun challenge and not necessarily always a challenge like uh, there's a lot of great copy out there that you forget you're selling something. <laughs> so cool. Um, the uh, the idea of of going from stage acting and film acting to to voiceover work during this time seems very appealing to a lot of people. Sure. Um, yeah. But I think it's been hard for a lot of people to get into. Right. It, it, you had the background of doing uh, audio books before that, so it, it was a little simpler to you, I, I imagine. Sort of, I mean, like they're different worlds. So I had to hunt for, um, I had to, you know, bug my representation a little bit and like, mm -hmm. hey, I want to do this too. Will you let me? And I put together a reel with um, this great company. I guess I'll give them a shout out right now, Ape Sauce. Um, Ape Sauce. Yes. And I was so happy with, um, with what we came up with and they were willing to work with me remotely. And uh, that helped me solidify um, a relationship with um, my, the VO, one of the agents in the VO department at KMR. And so now I'm just kind of hitting the ground running and auditioning for stuff. So that was kind of my journey, but the audiobook is kind of like a separate world, but, but I wasn't unfamiliar with a microphone and being in the studio speaking, not just singing. Um, right speaking for long periods of time <laughs> that can be hard i'm sure you have to drink a lot of water right and and yeah. some apple juice you know exactly la croix you have to be careful because the bubbles you can hear <laughs> yeah yeah unless that's an affectation that you want to use i mean maybe sure. the character is bubbly who, who knows sure, sure. Um, <laughs> speaking of character i have i have perused your reel as it were 
-hmm. And you have some very interesting character qualities that you choose. Mm -hmm. Which so, were, we just, were we, the acting reel? Yes, oh. yes. Okay. A, a bunch of the reels, actually. I've watched some YouTube videos. I've watched uh, the acting reel with, with stuff from uh, Dietland as well as, and I'm going to get the name wrong. Uh, it was an independent film. Oh, independent film. Yeah. Chaos no. something, maybe? No. Moria? Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in, in that specifically, I, I'm guessing your character is more like a sidekick to a bully. Is is Am yeah. I getting that right? I was a mean girl, but You're like... You're a mean uh, girl. Okay. Yeah. A mean girl from Queen. So not like, not like Broadway mean girls. Right, right. <laughs> like an actual punch you in the face mean girl. <laughs> yeah. Now you don't have any of those qualities yourself, right? No. No. <laughs> No, Completely. that's good. That's that's what they call acting. That's great. That's great. <laughs> um, and then your your character in Diet Land was a terrorist, right? A feminist terrorist. A feminist terrorist of a group called the Jennifers. The Jennifers. Yes. I was so sad when that didn't get picked up for a second season because. How many times do you get to play a feminist terrorist? <laughs> I have never played a feminist terrorist. I can say that for sure. Killing men in the name of justice. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I guess getting into that role was was quite a bit of fun. Yes. Yeah. No. It, and it was um, it was a really fun set. A really good group of girls. And. Uh, yeah, the the roller coaster ride of emotions with that, because um, they're in hiding when when you meet my character, um, and the main character uh, comes to meet the Jennifers is sort of recruited by us, and so learning her story and then feeling that camaraderie of of women who have been um, held back in many ways throughout their lives. You know, mm. we all had to fill in that backstory for us because that was going to be season two yeah. <laughs> in my mind. But um, <laughs> I'm not sure. I smell some fan fiction out there. Right. Yeah. You know, fan, right. Pick up Diet Land. Exactly. Right, right season two. Somebody <laughs> out there. Someone out there. And it's I, I believe it's available on Hulu, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. It was it was AMC, and so it's been it's been on several different things. And then I'm not sure where Happy Happy was on NBC. I'm not sure where that is right now. I yeah, should. Okay. Yeah, that was that was a very uh, crazy show. It was not for the faint of heart. No. So I had to be very careful when. Um, but I mean, I wanted everyone to watch it because it's so good. Yeah. But it definitely was not something that, let's say, somebody who's adverse to violence <laughs> would would care to care to watch. But I think violence, uh, drug use, um, profanity, those are the two main ones. Profanity. Um, profanity. Yeah. Powerful. I was so and funny. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Malone. Uh, Chris Malone. Chris Malone is so amazing. Good. Yeah. So if, good. I, I'm going to suggest that everyone who is not uh, catering to children all the time, watch this show. It's it's watch a lot of fun. Show. Watch the show. And you are Sister... Sister Lee. Sister Lee. <laughs> so, you know, blink and you'll miss me, but, but I'm technically in three episodes. And... Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. I teach his daughter. Ah. So she goes to an all Catholic girls' school in season two, and I'm her teacher. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah, I, I need to. I I didn't get all the way through season one, so I apologize. I have not met your character yet, but the clip that I've seen suggests something happening that's not quite good. There's a lot of not good that yeah, happens, yeah. but it's amazing how the not good gets resolved in this absurd way, this wonderful way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I, I did. I did say I was going to talk about character a lot. So let's get into that. Sure. So tell me what what 
what do you think your base process is when you're trying to get into a character, say like um, the person in the Jennifer or the person in uh, the, the woman who was a Jennifer, who was a uh, terrorist, a feminist terrorist? Um, I mean, there's, of course, there's the information on the page. I try to mine as much as the writers have given me in terms of uh, facts about these women's lives and um, what their role is in this terrorist organization. Um, but then I try to fill in for myself um, why, why she's a member of this organization, like what drove her to this point and, and what keeps her there because there are many ways you can rise up against the patriarchy um, to join a group like the Jennifers where you become hunted by the FBI <laughs> involves commitment. And um, so I just, I going, going down that rabbit hole and, mm -hmm. uh, and then listening to music, like I'll listen to music that I think this person would listen to, or at least lives in this world especially if it's a period piece, that's very helpful to me. Um, music is very, very grounding for me. Yes. Music is powerful. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, what music did she listen to? Might I ask? <laughs> um, I feel like I listened to a lot of uh, 70s rock <laughs> okay. when I was, um, but then also some, some good, um oh I'm blanking on the artist's name now. Um Annie Leave what, No. <laughs> Lennox? Oh, Annie Lennox? Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. going down those and Joni Mitchell and so also those strong, strong female voices. That makes total sense. Yeah, I get that. But not normally would you listen to that stuff. Is that is that fair? Some of it, but I don't yeah. know if I'd listen to it on repeat or as much um, as I did. Wow. I, I don't think I could ever listen to music that I don't like on repeat for that long. I guess, yeah, that would definitely put you in a different frame of mind. I've, sure. been, I've been in like, you know, period pieces where I've listened to classical music. And, um, you know, it's not to say that I never ventured out. I mean, when rehearsal was over, I might need to escape for a little bit back into my life. I'm not saying I, I go full. It's called acting, my good man, <laughs> as Olivier said once. Um, but, but at the same time, I I enjoy that because I enjoy thinking about life from a different perspective. Yeah. So you're also a filmmaker. How important is music in filmmaking to you? Oh, I mean, it's crucial, crucial, definitely. And I mean, I, I'm a aspiring, a budding filmmaker. I've, I've produced three uh, films with my uh, partner in crime, Pete. I'm actually working on a series now that's in post with um, a good friend of mine. Um, and music was one of the first things I thought about. And I, for the series that I'm working on now, I recruited my friend, Leo Hurley, who's a composer. And um, because I just I even though it's not a narrative piece, it's actually more of a it's not a documentary, but it's it's about cooking. It's a comedy series. Um, oh, OK, I knew that I wanted to have um, fun music as a bed that would keep people engaged and support what we were doing. Fun music. Fun. Like, uh, oh, I mean, kind of. Um, a little bit jazzy, jazzy funk, kind of ah. uh, <laughs> upbeat. Upbeat, got it, got it, got it. So Tom, if I were to, I gotta, I gotta keep the pace moving forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, so what's on your mind right now? Right now? Yes, right now, this very moment. Um, I was just watching you drink that seltzer with such passion and dedication. That was, that was really, I was focused in on you drinking that seltzer and thinking I want a seltzer. Um, here, 
I'll let you have mine. There you go. I'm so bad at that. Like the camera's over here and I'm like, see, budding filmmaker. <laughs> buddy, buddy filmmaker. So I, I watched your take on Castaway. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Yes. Your COVID, was, your COVID castaway, I guess. My, that was my COVID processing. That was like right after everything happened. And there was just sort of this like panic, depression. What do I do? And then I saw this video where somebody imitated um, a scene from Beetlejuice. The day, you said day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I thought, I saw Castaway and there was just the way he was talking to Wilson. I was like that. I feel like that right now. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm home alone talking to inanimate objects, wondering when I'm going to get off this island of crazy town. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, Wilson in this case was a volleyball for you? Spalding. Uh, yeah, it was. I mean, Spalding. It, <laughs> Right. Spalding, because I didn't have Wilson. I, all I had was Spalding, his his cousin. Yeah. So I thought like I could try to make it Wilson, but Spalding is written in giant letters. I mean, felt like I had to, I'd work with the understudy. You know. Well, I gotta, I gotta tell you, you committed so well that I actually believed that the ball in Tom Hanks' movie was called Spalding. <laughs> they should rewrite the movie. I don't think the movie did well enough. Tom Hanks wasn't wasn't very happy with that show. I think it was because Wilson. Why why shout Wilson when you can shout Spalding? Exactly, exactly. Gosh, Tom, talk to Steve or whoever. Wasn't that Rob? Maybe that was Ron. Ron. Ron Howard. I'm worried about their creative choices, but you know, yeah. it seems to be doing okay. <laughs> so tell me, how, what have you been binging on? I I have discovered myself recently that I go through a process of gorging myself on media and then taking myself away from it and actually thinking about what I've seen. And then I can actually create something. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, I wasn't gorging myself. I have, I was gorging myself on TV. For a while, Good Girls, I really enjoyed. Um, but recently, I've been reading again. I've been reading a lot. So I reread Anne of Green Gables mm. <laughs> and um, Emily of New Moon series. And then I just re I just read uh, my friend Chris Russell's trilogy. Um, one of my friends from London, who's a musician now author who wrote a, a trilogy that kind of took, he probably would hate the way I'm describing this. I'm sure he can describe it much better, but he took kind of, he, he wrote fan fiction for One Direction and then he took that and um, kind of took like the Twilight whole team, team this guy, team that guy. Interesting. And adapted it to the boy band world. Um, and I just, I think he's so funny and um, I really enjoyed the series. Um, so this is a humor series. It's a, like a, a young adult uh, boy band um, comedy. I mean, I just think Chris Russell is so inherently funny that mm -hmm. uh, it becomes, it, it has the comedy element, but, um, but yeah, so I, I get inspired by, not just TV and movies, but books and and all sorts of different media that makes me want to create. Cool. Yeah, we. I actually had a uh, author, uh, a pair of authors yesterday. Oh, wonderful! And one from the UK. His name was not Chris Russell, though. Oh, you should get Chris Russell. <laughs> well, hey, let me get in touch with him. That'd be great. Whatever. I don't it's know. It's called Songs About a Girl. Songs about yeah, songs about a girl series. Songs about a boy, songs about us. So I think it's just very, very well written, knows his audience. Mm -hmm. So that's it. when something's well crafted, even if it's not necessarily like your thing, if it's well crafted to me, that's worth paying attention to. Yes.
So would you say though that you have been binging on this book and then you walk yeah. away from it? Well, yeah. I, I, there was like a day where I had all these other plans that I just completely abandoned to read, to read one of the books and finish yeah. it in like a day. I, I lost control. <laughs> we need that though. We need to lose our controls every now and then. Right. You know, yeah. But then you yeah. resurface and you're like, oh, wow, yes, the the okay. world. But that's kind of a nice feeling. Yeah, that it's still here. Right. You wait, wait. I just remembered something. You also told me though that your daughter is a big Frozen fan. She is. So she's I'm a huge Frozen fan. To be speaking to the princess. Anna. Yes, and and she had a question for you because she knew that she couldn't be here tonight. So. I'm going to give you that question. Um, I hope I can answer it. I, I took my inspiration from her. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, for those of you watching, all three of you, my my daughter also has played Anna, Princess Anna, locally with a, 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 a company here, um, and they, they entertain the kids, basically. So uh, her question for you is, what do you think of frogs? What do I think of frogs? Yes. I mean, I, I, I love all creatures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like this is like a trick question. Like well, not, there was something in the movie that she felt about frogs. No, 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 <laughs> not at all. Uh, my daughter is a, a bit like me in a way where she'll come up with an inane question. So that was her inane question this evening. Um, hey, I like frogs. You know, yeah. frogs Frogs have an important place in this world, sort of like the butterfly effect. You know, you take a frog, you take a frog off its lily pad and rainforests halfway around the world. No. Right. Exactly. Let's not do that. Leave those butterflies alone. Leave leave the frogs alone. And the frogs. Unless yeah. unless it becomes a plague situation, which I hear that that can be intimidating and justifiably so. Yeah. Locally, I've been plagued by spiders. That's not fun either. <laughs> oh, it's not. So, Outside, not inside. They're, they're just like they build these big uh, webs outside while I'm walking through the dark and then I just have a face plant of web in my face. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot to take in on any given day. It is. Do you, do um, you, uh, so is this, I have a question for you. Yes, please. Plan a <laughs> performance project. Yes. Is that is that something you co-founded? Uh, if you consider my daughter to be one of the founders, yes. <laughs> we co-founded it together. Although she, I just kind of like pulled her in. Um, but it was really uh, an idea that came about while I was on stage. And I was on stage at several different stages here in Savannah. And I, I it became apparent to me that they weren't organizing themselves as, as far as the season goes and, and being able to see who's doing the most at the most uh, at, at any one time. Um, so they were using the same audience and, and spreading it thinner and thinner as, as far as what I was seeing. Um, so I, I wanted a way for them to, to bridge their communication and, and be able to organize in a way. Um, not so much like a. Yeah. Help each other. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. I mean, until it becomes like everybody's going and their people are just overwhelmed, like, it's in the theater's best interest to work together. Right. I would think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would, I, th my theory is that the more theater you have, the more people will go to see theater. Um, and of course. Oh, it becomes a hub. Yeah, exactly. Chicago, New York. Savannah. Savannah. <laughs> Savannah. We're working on it. Me and Ryan are working on it. We'll see. We'll see what happens. You and Ryan combined are, are, our powerhouse. So I can't wait to see what you guys do with that town. Yeah, we, we may do some stuff together. I think, I think we will. I've always wanted to get to Savannah. So, you know, Come on down. I just got to audition for something and 
you know, I, if, so you just got to hire me, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll work on, I'll see what I have coming up. I mean, well, Hamilton's in rehearsal right now, so we'll see what happens with that. You, um, but it's, you know, the backyard, it's called Backyard Hamilton. Backyard Productions. Love yeah, it. Exactly. This is um, some good work. But I know Savannah Rep has got stuff coming up for sure. I'm sure you'd be perfect for was, anything they're doing. I was just, you know, but it is a town I would love to, love to explore. It is, it is a very explorable town. I will say that. Sounds good. Um, wow. Anything else you want to talk about? Any other questions you have for me? Um, what, what keeps you going day to day? What, what led you to create this, this um, show? That oh, well, that's, that's yeah. a great question. Um, so the reason I created the show was because we were supposed to have a community meeting on March... 22nd of this past year, and it was going to be in a newly opened uh, improv stage, uh, actually the one that I'm going to tonight in just a little while. Um, and we found out we couldn't do it. Everything closed down. I was disheartened, of course, and I saw someone else doing this. Um, in particular, I saw Seth Rudetsky and his partner were doing the stars in the house thing. And it inspired me because I saw immediately what they were using as a tool and knew that I could use it very easily. And I thought, well, let's talk to people. That's one of the things I love to do. So that's great. Here we are. It's yeah. and the beauty of is that they last on YouTube forever. Right. So, you know, if somebody misses tonight, but is curious to meet whoever you talk to, they can go back and see it. So exactly. that's, that's the one of the beauty about recording things. I mean, theater and, you know, improv, once it's live and it's done, it's done. <laughs> yes. yes, that is the beauty of it, yes. But I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head when you said, once it's done, it's done. And that's why we need it. Because right. there is nothing more precious than that ephemeral experience that you have with live theater. Right. Well, it sort of reminds me of the Buddhist art um, where they create these beautiful designs in the sand, gorgeous thing. And you think this has to be kept. This is too beautiful to destroy. And then they destroy it. Yeah. They just, it's and gone. Letting go, letting go of all of their work. And I'm like, Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's so hard for all of us. We want our work to last forever. Oh, but man. And we we're such to. a materialistic society that, you know, it's it's hard for us to let go of anything, really, you know? Right. And so then when, you know, we lose people in our lives, mm -hmm. it's even, I mean, we're just, we are not trained to let go of anything. We are, we are trained to grip and hold on to everything as much as possible. So if we can start letting go of our work, if we can start letting, then, you know, than the things that really matter, um, we might we might weather better. Mm -hmm. I hear a song. It's I'm theory. hearing a song in my head right now. <laughs> I think you should sing it. Sing a song. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, it's actually it's a song by Princess Anna in oh. Frozen Two. Oh, the next. Yes, thing. the next right thing. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But um, you know, you don't have to sing that. I won't, <laughs> I won't the next right thing. Yes, very good. I'll sing that line. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, Thank this you is so fun. Much. even if it yeah. were just the two of us, which it might very well be at this point. Yeah. I, I've really enjoyed talking to you. There are four. There are four people watching now. Thank you, all four of you are so popular <laughs> yes and we're going to send you those t-shirts as soon as they're printed what what was the saying again now i can't remember oh gosh i don't remember we'll Some... have to rewind and, and figure oh, it out follow the ramble until you find your way home <laughs> yes <laughs> it's, not, it's, like, way home. it's like something out of big river <laughs> yeah i think it is i think that's a song from big river i'm pretty sure sounds plausible <laughs> okay so the last thing we do before we leave air is we have to do what's called a, a sitcom freeze do you know what a sitcom freeze is 
Yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah, <laughs> you got to give it the biggest expression that you possibly can. Like, possibly, mom has discovered your collection of something, and there's a huge laugh, or there's not a huge laugh. Oh, you're in trouble. That kind of thing. Okay. So I'm going to give you the count of three, and I'm going to say sitcom freeze, and then you just you freeze. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. 